This is the ReSpeaker 2 mics Pi Hat. Well, in fact, this is just the box. Um, the actual Pi Hat I've already attached to my Raspberry Pi 3B. This is it here. It fits to both, uh, well, it fits to all Raspberry Pi models, I believe. And the two microphones can be seen here on the front, one on each side. And I've actually been searching for a suitable microphone solution for the Raspberry Pi for voice projects for quite some time. I've tried many things such as the little USB plug-in microphones, I've tried the USB cameras with microphones built in, but all of these options have been unsatisfactory either because they simply work very poorly or because they're very difficult to build into a project. And this solution here I have found to be excellent and at a very good price point, something that's really quite reasonable because all of the other mic hats and solutions on the market that are specifically designed to fit onto the Pi tend to be prohibitively expensive, um, including the ReSpeaker circular Pi hat, which I think has um, about eight different mics on it. Um, this is at a really good price point which makes it economical to build voice solutions with a Raspberry Pi. The only thing I found a little bit awkward was the install experience for the software on the Pi which we'll take a look at in terms of the experience that I had at least. So if you go to the Seed website and look for the ReSpeaker 2 Mics Pi Hat it will have the instructions here there's some great information here including the various capabilities so it's more than just a microphone it has speaker out and um, a number of other capabilities here a button that you can configure functionality for uh, but let's scroll down here to where it talks about the setup so once you have your Raspberry Pi set up you will need to well I recommend doing a um, an update and an upgrade and then you clone their software from git using this command here change into the directory that will have downloaded and you run the install script with this command here. This is where I ran into some problems so let's take a look at uh, the issues I had there. Okay so here we're looking at the contents of that directory and if we run the install script using the um, parameters that they gave us there which is so from the website You'll see I very quickly have this error here. Error, not enough space left on boot. Um, I also, I'd actually added, uh, while well, I was trying to debug this, this little output here to show me what space there is on boot. Uh, so it's doing something in that shell script to uh, check against the space that we have on our boot sector and it's deciding that it won't install. So let's take a look at what's in that file and you can see here we're actually doing a uh, executing a command to find out um, what is in the space uh, and you'll see here is the error error not enough space left on boot and it displays the um, amount of space that's available there so after a bit of googling around and trying to work out what was going on in the end I just decided to try and comment out all of these lines here so what I actually did was just put in a hash like this against all of these lines and then saved the file and once I'd done that I reran the install and it actually worked for me so uh, I don't understand why um, because presumably it's trying to, to replace the kernel maybe in the end it had enough space after all it certainly didn't seem to be the case based on the logic here and based on a little bit of a, a search that I did but in terms of feedback to the team at Seed Studio fantastic product and I'll show in a moment how well it works at recording but it would be great if this install process was a little smoother and a little less error free and perhaps a little less mysterious. Before you begin testing with your device uh, it's probably worth configuring at least for the microphone uh, the card to be the default recording device so to take a look at your recording devices type in a record minus L to list them and you'll see here the seed device is listed as card 2 so now if you're using Ulsa as your sound configuration device you'll then want to run or set up your Ulsa config which I'm using .asoundrc as the file um, and you'll see here for my microphone this is the content I'm using in my Ulsa config 
and I've set here the hard the card number two being the um, the device used in that case and that lets me now run a command like this one to actually do some recording and I'll show you how that records at different distances and then we'll play back the file this is me recording at two meters from the pie now I'm recording at four meters from the Raspberry Pi I'm now at about six meters from the Raspberry Pi and now I'm standing at about eight meters okay so despite cutting myself off at the end of the video there you can see that at the different distances I was recording from it's very consistent in the sound levels um, it just starts to get a little bit echoey as you move away so I'm very very impressed with how well this device records and works as a built-in microphone for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the final thing I'd like to show you here is just how one extra thing you might want to do is go into your Ulsa mixer, uh, hit uh, F6 to find the right card, and you'll see there's a lot of controls here for it. Now I've, as you can see, increased most of them to a pretty high level. Um, I'm not sure which ones actually are the microphone in. I'm thinking this one here, left input and right input, are probably the microphones. As you can see, they're turned way up, so um, that's probably why I'm recording very good sound there. But still, um, look, fantastic product. A little clunky on the install. Highly recommended if you need some sort of recording device built into your Raspberry Pi. So thank you very much for watching.